Hi, I'm Megan and welcome to my kitchen. In today's What's for Dinner video, I'll be sharing with you what meals we had this past week. Our dinners were easy to make, budget friendly, and delicious. So if you're looking for some weeknight meal ideas for your family, just keep watching. I've mentioned before on my channel many times that I love, I call it a snacky dinner, a dinner where I just make like finger foods or appetizers and I've been wanting to make that and I figured tonight was the night. I'm going to start out by making a veggie crescent pizza. Now I've shared this several times before my channel, but I wanted to share it again. Um, it's great to make for holidays. It's a great way to sneak veggies in for your kiddos, um, but it's also just one of my favorite things to make. It's so yummy. So to get started, we're going to use some crescent rolls. Now I will link the recipe that I kind of loosely follow in the description box below when it's just my husband and I I have the recipe so I'm just using one can of crescent rolls I happen to have the sheet dough um, but if you only have the crescent rolls themselves just pinch it together um, pinch the seams together rather and you're going to pre-bake this at 375 degrees for about 10 minutes until it's slightly golden brown and then you're going to let this cool completely to this mixing bowl I'm going to add in my softened cream cheese Next, I'm going to add in my sour cream. Now, I have made this before where I've used non-fat Greek yogurt in place of the sour cream. Turns out just fine. You can use whatever your preference is. Next, I'm going to add in some dry ranch dressing mix. And then I like to add in just a tiny little bit of salt and pepper, not a lot. Um, but between the, all the veggies and the uh, crescent dough, I feel like it could use just a pinch of salt. I'm going to stir that until it's combined really well and then here I'm just touching the uh, crescent roll dough to make sure it's cooled. I'm going to add the cream cheese mixture and spread it out into an even layer all over the crust. Now for the veggies. Really you can use whatever you like. Here's what I personally like to add. I add some carrots here. I've just got some baby carrots I finely diced. Um, you could also do shredded. I've got some Roma tomatoes that I seeded and diced, a cucumber that I seeded and diced, and then chopped up broccoli. Now you could also do celery, you could do green onions, bell peppers, zucchini or squash. Again, whatever you like, whatever you've got on hand. Once I've added the veggies, I'm going to add some shredded cheddar cheese, and then I like to take my fingers and just kind of press the veggies and cheddar cheese down so it kind of adheres to the cream cheese a little bit. And then that's it. This is ready to serve right away. You can cover this and place this into the refrigerator until you're ready to serve it. Now, I will say if it sets like overnight, the crescent rolls will get a little more soft, which I mean, it's fine. It's delicious. I still eat it, but just kind of be mindful of it. Um, if you're wanting the crust to be, you know, a little more sturdy I would serve it the same day next I'm going to make crock pot barbecue meatballs so you're going to need some frozen meatballs use your favorite I like this from the Dollar General store honestly it's my favorite frozen meatballs but just use your favorite next I'm going to add some barbecue sauce again use your favorite brand and then I used to add the good old standard grape jelly to this but several months back I saw Taylor Elmore use red pepper jelly and I've started doing that love it highly recommend they're not like spicy I mean depending on how much of the pepper jelly you put in but it gives it just a nice little kick I'm going to cover this and then cook this on high for two hours do be careful when you're cooking meatballs in the crock pot if you cook them for too long they can get really hard on you um, but I find two hours on high stirring them halfway through they're perfect Next, I'm going to make some pigs in a blanket. I've got some crescent rolls and a package of little Smokies. No real recipe for this. All you do is just take the crescent rolls, cut them into little pieces, wrap them around each little Smokie, and then place them. I like to do a grease cookie sheet and bake it at 375 degrees for about 10 to 12 minutes until they're golden brown. And again, because it was just my husband and I this night, I only used half the package of Smokies and half that roll of crescent roll dough. I had the other half of the dough and I was like, what am I going to do with that? And uh, the night before I'd seen Fallon at Moss Family TV make these uh, like little cream cheese pepper jelly bites. And I thought, oh my gosh, that's what I'll do. And I can use up some of that pepper jelly. So what I did was I took the crescent roll dough that I had left over again. I'm 
just used a half a can for this. I pinched all the seams together, rolled it out, and then cut it into little squares. I then greased a mini muffin tin really, really well with some cooking spray. I added the little squares of crescent roll dough in there. And then I'm going to take a little bit of cream cheese and place it in each little dish and then add some of that pepper jelly. And then I'm going to bake these right alongside the um, pigs in a blanket 375 again for about 10 to uh, 12 or 13 minutes. Here is my plate. I've got some of the meatballs, the pigs in a blanket, those little pepper jelly cream cheese bites, and the veggie pizza. So yummy. Just sat and ate this and watched Christmas movie. And we had the uh, leftovers for lunch the next day, maybe even the day after that. I can't remember. But I highly recommend you give these recipes a try. They're all really yummy. And like I said, they're perfect for a snacky night like this or, um, you know, Christmas party, New Year's Eve party, any occasion. I had a box of frozen fish fillets in my freezer that I really needed to use up, so I figured I would do easy fish tacos. So here are those fish fillets I'm talking about. Got these at Aldi. I had about a half a box. I'm just going to cook those in the air fryer. And then here's everything else I'm going to use for my tacos. Use whatever you prefer. I've got some small flour tortillas. You could, of course, use corn if you prefer. Some shredded coleslaw mix or just shredded cabbage and carrots. Shredded cheese some fresh salsa, guacamole, and then I'm using this Chipotle Ranch from Walmart. For the fish, I did it in the air fryer tonight to keep it easy. You could bake these or cook them however you'd prefer. I believe I cooked these at 400 degrees for about four minutes, flipped them over, and cooked them for another three or four minutes until they were golden brown and cooked all the way through. I was trying to think of a quick and easy side dish to make with these, and I had about a half a bag of these crispy tots. I got these at Aldi. Um, they were in my freezer. I wanted to use them up, and I remembered that a couple days before this, I'd pinned like a copycat Taco John's, their potato recipe, so I thought I'd give those a try, and you'll need some tater tots. Uh, I think they use like the little flatter rounds, uh, but I had these, so that's what I'm going to use, and then we're going to need some seasoned salt, cumin, paprika, and kind and pepper. Now, again, the recipe will link down below. All I did was um, I quartered the recipe and added the seasonings to a little bowl, mixed them around. I cooked the tater tots in the air fryer at 400 degrees for about 10 minutes, shaking them halfway through. When they were done, I added some of that seasoning and gave them a toss. And then here is my plate. I just laid down the tortillas. I warmed them up uh, first on top of the stove, added my cooked fish fillets and then the toppings, and then had the tater tots. And this was a quick and easy and yummy dinner. For dinner the next night, my husband asked if he could grab Sonic on the way home. He was really wanting their chicken wraps. I said, that's fine with me. I don't have to cook. <laughs> so here's what we got. I got their chicken club toaster, which this used to be on Sonic's menu, um, but they took it off years ago. But the Sonics, near me at least, um, they, they'll still make it if you ask for it. And basically, it's just fried chicken on their toast with um, cheese, bacon, lettuce, tomato. Now, they used to put honey mustard on on it right before they took it off the menu permanently they just switched it to mayonnaise so when I get it I get it with no lettuce and with honey mustard instead of mayonnaise and then their chili cheese tots just sounded really good to me so that's what I got and then my husband got their chicken wraps like I said uh, he used to prefer the grilled chicken wraps um, but they took the grilled chicken off the menu uh, so he gets the crispy chicken wraps and then he got um, just a small order of mozzarella sticks and that was our dinner this night for dinner the next night, I made something called Gaelic chicken. Now, I've shared this before on my channel, but I have been craving it, so I wanted to share it again. There used to be an Irish pub in a town outside of Nashville called Cavanaugh's. That was the name of the restaurant, not the town. Um, but they closed down years ago, but I still crave this chicken. I've tried my best to recreate it at home. Here's what I've come up with, and it's delicious. So for the chicken, I have some thinly sliced chicken breast. I'm going to add a little bit of oil, a little bit of butter, to my uh, skillet and then I'm going to take my chicken breasts and cook them in the oil and butter until they are cooked all the way through. Now I kept the seasonings on the chicken kind of simple just did some badia complete and some cavenders and then just did a tiny tiny little pinch of salt. The badia complete and the cavenders both have salt in it so you want to watch the added salt and then I added some pepper. 
So once the chicken was cooked on both sides and cooked until it was 165 degrees internal temperature, I removed the chicken from the skillet and set it to the side. Now the Gaelic chicken at Kavanoff's, it was grilled chicken breast. This is how their menu um, described it anyway, with a cheese sauce, and then they served it with mashed potatoes and broccoli. Now I have no idea what kind of cheese they used. I was looking for an Irish cheese. Um, I couldn't find one, but I did find this English cheddar. So I'm going to shred that up and then make a quick cheese sauce. To this little pot, I'm going to add in some butter and then turn my heat on about medium, medium low. Once that butter has melted, I'm going to sprinkle over some flour, whisk that, and then allow that flour to cook for about a minute. Once the flour has cooked for about a minute, I'm going to slowly whisk in some milk. Uh, you could also use half and half or heavy cream, but I find milk works just fine. Now, while I'm doing that, a quick note. I don't know what happened with this cheese sauce. I've made it a, a million times, it feels like. Um, I think, honestly, it was that English cheddar. Uh, as I was shredding it, it was really, really super dry. And the cheese sauce at the end, um, it just the texture was off. So I ended up remaking it off camera using just regular uh, cheddar cheese. And I think I would just stick with the regular cheddar cheese in the future. It gave a good flavor. Um, the color match, what I remember at Cavanaugh's. Um, so yeah, I would just stick with the, the regular shredded cheese. But once I've got the milk uh, whisked in, you're going to simmer that until it starts to thicken. I decided to add in just a little bit of paprika, garlic powder, and then salt and pepper, and then I whisk that cheese in. Once the cheese melts, and you want to add the cheese in over about low heat, or you can even turn the heat off. But once the cheese has melted, that's it. Your sauce is ready. For the potatoes, I had a bag of these steam and mashed potatoes in my freezer and I wanted to use those up. Um, you can of course just use regular potatoes. If you've never seen these steam and mashed before, they're basically just russet potatoes that have already been washed and peeled, cut into dices, and par cooked. All you have to do is pop the bag and all into the microwave for about 10 minutes and they're done. Now these are great for mashed potatoes like this. You can use them for soup, crock pot meals. I've also started using them to make my potato salad. Um, just do be mindful, there is some added salt in this. So if you're using it in a recipe, maybe hold off on adding the salt until you give it a taste first. Um, so I've just cooked these according to the package instructions. Here in this bowl, I have a little bit of butter. I had just a couple tablespoons of cream cheese, um, whipped cream cheese that I wanted to use up. So I'm gonna add that. Now what I like to do is add the butter to the dish and then add the hot potatoes on top so it kind of melts a little bit. And then I'm going to just use a hand mixer, add in some salt, pepper, milk, and um, whisk those until they're my desired consistency. And then that's it. They're done. So here's the finished potatoes. And then for the broccoli, I've got some frozen broccoli florets. I get these at Aldi. They're really good bite-sized pieces, so I love using these. I just cooked them in the bag according to the package instructions, placed it in a bowl, added just a tiny little pat of butter, and then today I seasoned it with some of the Kinder's Buttery Steakhouse seasoning. Here is my plate. So I've got the chicken with some of that cheese sauce, the broccoli, mashed potatoes, and then I added just a little bit of parsley flakes on top. You don't have to do that, just really for color. This is delicious, and I love to dip my mashed potatoes and the broccoli into that cheese sauce. So good. For dinner the next night, I made coleslaw tostadas. Now this recipe was sent to me from one of you subscribers. Her name is Taylor. I've made this once before and Gary and I really liked it. I've been wanting to make it again. I recommend you all give it a try. It's delicious and it's pretty easy to put together. We're gonna start out by making the coleslaw. So you can shred up your own cabbage if you prefer. I'm using the rest of the coleslaw mix that I had from the fish tacos the other night. And then Taylor in her um, email to me, she said she likes to use the Hidden Valley coleslaw saw mix and I used that the first time I could not find that anywhere though so I got this Marzetti coleslaw um, dressing it was good I, I do agree with Taylor I do prefer the Hidden Valley if you can find that I would use it or just use your favorite coleslaw dressing but I'm going to mix together the cabbage the dressing a little salt and pepper and then place that into the fridge for a little bit to allow the cabbage to soften in this skillet here, I had about a half a pound of ground turkey and a half a pound of lean ground beef that I needed to use up. So I just combined both of them, cooked them until they were brown. Next, I'm going to add in a little bit of water. We're basically just making some um, taco meat. 
I had this packet of Taco Bell taco seasoning in my pantry. I would bought a Taco Bell like taco kit at some point had this. So I'm going to add that. And then as you can see, I didn't have very much of this Mateo salsa at all, but I figured I'd add it. It would add some flavor and moisture and use up the rest of that salsa. Now, um, while I was in my pantry getting the taco seasoning, um, I noticed this can of green chilies and later in the week, I'm going to make a recipe where I only need half the can. So I'm going to go ahead and use the other half now. That way I don't waste it. So once I've got that in, I'm going to give it a stir and then just simmer this for maybe about 10 to 15 minutes or so. Next for the refried bean layer, I've got a can of refried beans. I'm going to warm them up in the microwave with just a little bit of water. And then I'm going to add some taco seasoning and just a couple dashes of hot sauce. Now here are the toppings that I'm going to use. We've got the coleslaw. I have the Taco Bell creamy chipotle sauce I'm gonna set out in case my husband wants to add it, as well as the sour cream and hot sauce if he wants to add it. I've got some of the fresh salsa, the Taco Bell mild salsa um, or mild sauce packet. Again, that was in that same taco kit that I had the taco seasoning. And then I have some shredded cheese. Now for the tostada shells, Taylor recommended frying your own. Uh, the first time I made it, I used just the like packaged tostada shells you can get at the grocery store. This time I decided to follow her suggestion and fry them myself. I did prefer them fried myself, uh, but if you're making these for a group or for a company or something, you could just use the um, tostada shells you can buy. I just added some vegetable oil to the skillet, brought it up to temperature over about medium high heat and cooked the tortillas for just a couple minutes on each side until they were crispy and then moved them to a paper towel lined plate. Here is my plate. So to assemble these, I just laid down the tostada shell, laid down some of the refried beans on top of that, added the taco meat, the coleslaw, and then the toppings that I wanted to add. These are actually really filling and they are delicious. Like I said, I was kind of hesitant the first time with the coleslaw, but the coleslaw dressing mixes with the taco meat and it's just really good. This would be great to make for your family. Everybody can make their tostadas how they want. This would also be great to make for, um, you know, a Christmas dinner or New Year's dinner. It's something different than just like the usual ham or roast beef or something that everybody makes. I think it's a crowd pleaser. And again, you can just kind of set everything out, get everything prepped, and then everybody can make it how they wish. All right, that was our dinner this night. Like I said, I recommend you all give these a try. They're yummy. Now, it's been a while since I've talked about this on my channel, but I used to mention pretty often that I've made something for years and years that I call two-time and pasta. That's what the original recipe that I saw for it called it. It's basically just cooked pasta that you mix with jarred Alfredo sauce, jar jarred spaghetti sauce, if I could talk, uh, put it in a casserole dish, sprinkle it with some cheese, bake it, and there you go. Like I said, I've made it for years. I've made it for company. I've taken it uh, like to meals for people who are sick or who had just had babies. Everyone has loved it. And here lately I've seen, they're calling it like the viral TikTok baked spaghetti or alfredo spaghetti but i'm not cool enough for tiktok so i've seen it on instagram um but it's literally like the exact same thing except you use homemade alfredo sauce and i was like why have i not tried this before i know alfredo sauce homemade is so much better than jarred so i've been wanting to try it and i made it you guys you have to give this a try this was so delicious all right let me show you how i did this i didn't really follow a recipe exactly um but i'll include a recipe for the alfredo sauce down below I'm going to start with the spaghetti sauce. In this skillet, I've got some ground turkey. I seasoned it with some salt and pepper, added in some diced onion. I cooked it until the turkey was no longer pink. I'm going to add in a little bit of minced garlic, give that a stir and cook it for about 30 seconds. You could use ground beef in this, ground pork, um, Italian sausage, whatever you like, or you could just leave the meat out. So once that garlic has cooked, I'm going to add in my pasta sauce. I'm using a jar of this Bertoli tomato basil. Use your favorite brand or kind, or you could also make your own sauce from scratch. When I use jarred spaghetti sauce, I like to doctor it up a little bit. So I'm going to add in some garlic powder, Italian seasoning, this basil uh, paste, 
salt, pepper, and then a little pinch of sugar. I like to add sugar to my spaghetti sauce. I feel like it cuts the acidity. If you don't like sugar in your spaghetti sauce, it's your kitchen. Don't add it. I'm going to give that a stir and then set that to the side and allow it to simmer while I cook up my pasta and the Alfredo sauce. I had about a half a box of this um, pot size spaghetti. So I'm going to cook it according to the package instructions and drain it really well and set it to the side. This is the same pot that I cooked my spaghetti in, so it's clean. I just cooked the spaghetti and wiped it out. I'm gonna make the Alfredo sauce in the same pot, less dishes. I'm gonna add the butter to my pot. This is over about medium low heat. Once the butter has melted, I'm going to add in some minced garlic, give that a whisk, and cook that for about 30 seconds to a minute. Next, I'm adding in my heavy whipping cream. Now, you do need to use heavy cream for this. If you try to make this with just half and half or regular milk, it will not work. You need all of the fat from the heavy cream. Once I've got the heavy cream in there, I'm going to simmer this for about three to five minutes until it starts to thicken. Once it's thickened, we are going to add in our uh, Parmesan cheese. I'm using pre-shredded. You can, of course, shred your own. And then I'm going to add in some mozzarella cheese. I've got this in my fridge. I really need to use it up, so I'm going to add that in there. And then I'm going to season this to taste with some freshly grated black pepper. Give it a taste, though, before you add salt. You may not to, uh, need to add any salt. But once the sauce is where I want it, I'm going to add in my cooked and drained pasta. Give that a stir, and then we're ready to assemble. Now, honestly, you could stop right there and you'd have a delicious and amazing Alfredo dinner. You'd add some broccoli, some frozen peas, some chicken or shrimp. Yummy. But we're going to make it a little bit better. We're going to add it to a greased casserole dish and then add our spaghetti sauce on top. Now, I did about a half of a recipe from what I saw people doing online anyway. And I did, I think this is like an 8 by 11 or a 9 by 11 and it made tons for us for dinner. We had leftovers for lunch and we even had seconds for dinner it was so good so once i've got the alfredo spread out and the spaghetti sauce on top i'm going to add some shredded mozzarella cheese this is going to go into an oven i baked it at 350 degrees for about 30 minutes or so and then once it came out i sprinkled it with some uh, parsley flakes and allowed it to sit for about 10 or 15 minutes before i served it to go along with it, I have these New York breadsticks. I just baked these in the oven according to the package instructions. If you've never tried these, they really remind me of Olive Garden's breadsticks. They're not as good, I'll be honest, but they're really close. So once they came out of the oven, I just added just a tiny little um, brush of butter on top. All right, here are the plates. So we've got the spaghetti, the breadstick, and then I made some side salads. And a quick note, um, if you noticed when I did the veggie crescent pizza at the beginning, I had some leftover um, like chopped vegetables, the tomato, uh, carrots, and cucumber. I saved that. I put it into the refrigerator. And so when I went to make salads this night, I just pulled that out and I already had my veggies chopped up. Um, but, and then for my husband's salad, he had some of the Ken's uh, Thousand Island dressing. I had some homemade ranch dressing. And like I said, I cannot recommend this enough. This was delicious. It was really, really good. I recommend you all give it a try. Last but not least, I'm trying a new recipe for a Mexican chicken casserole. As always, the recipe will be in the description box below. So first up, we need some cooked chicken. You could use leftover chicken, rotisserie chicken. I have a ton of chicken breasts in my freezer that I'm trying to work through. So I just pulled some out, thawed it. I seasoned it up with some taco seasoning, and then I just cooked it in the air fryer to make it easy. I cooked it at 300 um, and 60 degrees for about 10 minutes, flipped it over, cooked it for another 10 or 12 minutes until the chicken was 165 degrees. And then I'm gonna allow this to cool and dice it up. I've got this skillet over medium heat. I'm going to add in my cooked and diced chicken. Next, I'm going to add in some salsa. And I just had a little bit of this jar left. It wasn't enough, so I added some salsa verde. And then I'm going to add in the cream cheese. I mixed that around and I could tell I still hadn't added quite enough salsa, but I didn't have any in my pantry. So I just used some of this Taco Bell taco sauce. I'm going to give this a stir and then cook this on again about medium, medium, low heat until the cheese is melted. I'm going to add in some black beans. I rinsed and drained them and then the green chilies. This is the other half of that can I use for the coleslaw tostadas. I'm going to stir that in and cook it for just a minute or two until it's warmed through. 
The oven is preheating to 350 degrees. I've sprayed a square nine by nine casserole dish with some cooking spray. Now the recipe says to use tortilla chips. I had some of these little baggies of Doritos that I wanted to use up. So I'm gonna crush those and then I decided to add in just a few of these tortilla chips that I had in my pantry. I'm gonna spread the crushed tortilla chips out and then I'm going to add my chicken and cheese mixture and spread that out. Next, I'm going to add a layer of sour cream, spread that out, then a layer of chopped tomatoes, some chopped green onions, and then we're going to add a layer of shredded cheddar cheese. This is going to go into the preheated oven and bake for about 30 minutes until it is bubbly. Here is what it looked like when it was done. Now the recipe as written, like I said, made the square nine by nine. If you're cooking for more than I'd say like two adults, two kids, I would double the recipe. For the side, I just made some quick corn, just took a can of corn, drained it, added it to the sauce pot with a little tiny pat of butter, some salt, pepper, and a sprinkle of paprika. And then to serve the casserole up, I just added some chopped green onions on top. This casserole was actually pretty tasty. Both Gary and I liked it. I've made kind of a similar casserole before and it didn't have a lot of flavor, but we felt like this had good flavor. So I would recommend you give this a try and I'd definitely make it again. All right, that is it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you liked this video and got some dinner inspiration. If you did, hit the thumbs up button below and subscribe to my channel if you're not already and have a great rest of the day. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.